good, y'all. It's Harvey Lopez, TOP Magazine, here with my boy, DJ Upgrade. Chill, chill, chill. What's going on, bro? How you doing today? Cool, cool, sitting on his edge like I'm in New Yorkers, you understand me? Yo, shout out to the BX. Right. So, hey, tell me what's going on with Paul Margarita, man. It's like it's an right now, bro. Like, yeah, it's man. Amazing. It's basically like Molly Margarita is my single, of course, you feel me? And uh, I basically linked up with Sneaky Mike, somebody who I've been around for a minute and never really did work with. I do that. I know it kind of come off caddish, but uh, finally got a beat from him or whatever. Took it to LA, played it for show, show liked it. He said I should really do something with it, make it like a bigger project or whatever. So I took my time with it. And then on the spoof, like I was just playing the beat, thinking about some party stuff, thinking about some memories, and I just came up with like, mm, Molly Margarita. Like, yeah, I remember I remember the, I remember them days. Good memories, you know, or whatever. So I'm gonna just call it that. And then, you know, like naming some naming a song a hit song, like it has a nice name to it, but if, you, if I didn't say it right on the hooks, I really doubt people would even really care about the song like that or whatever. So I knew I had to like twist it up to a certain extent when I do the Molly Margarita. So I've always been trained that my voice is an instrument. So I know how to flip my voice hella much or whatever. Even show say I done fooled him on verses or whatever. So I made sure I came kind of, I made sure I made it to where when you listen to it, you know, like, Upgrade, growing as an artist, like, uh, this is another Upgrade track, like, he's doing his thing, this is going to be his next one or whatever, so, it started growing, feel me, caught some steam, I shot the promo video, that got hella love, and then right now, we're trying to set up the real video shoot, too short, uh, I sent it to him again, and he's like, let me get on the intro, let me just say something, you know, so, you'll have that stamp on it, so he on the intro now, and you know, there's some, uh, some bitches in the background in the ad libs or whatever too so you know make sure y'all be on the lookout for that but yeah the new molly margarita version that i'm shipping to the to the radio is gonna have two shirt on it like that we can shoot the video i got the black hole theory uh in the works right now man it's gonna be a solid i would say hands down like my best my best sounding project for sure for sure it's really pro produced and uh of course pushing licks licksmovie.com i'm in that too you feel me i'm the bad guy Shout out Cam, R.I.P. Cam, that's my nigga, whatever. And, uh, man, just really working, man, you feel me? Like, I just came back from L.A. I'm out here for, like, another week or so. Just really touching back down, trying to, you know, keep myself humble. You know, I'm moving around and all that, but, you know, I'm still a human like everybody else. Yeah, exactly. uh, what I want to know is, uh, how did Two Short get in contact with you? How did you become Did you contact him or did he contact you? Um, me messing with Two Short was, like... On the real, some real fluke shit. Like I've been working at Youth Uprising. You know, I you know, choppers. <laughs> Can't talk with them choppers slime bar, but uh, I've been. Uh, I used to work at Youth Uprising on 8 and Mac or whatever. Shout out Youth Uprising, and they had me there like as an engineer. I mixed up, but I didn't. I really talk kids like about rapping more than anything or whatever. So I worked up there a lot. I performed all my positive music, they would let me perform up there anyway, and uh, I never knew, but you know, some of Too Short people be up there, so one day they, they told me, come to Show Lab, you know, and, and come work, so he said, come to Show Lab, come work, so like, I ain't gonna lie, them niggas will tell you, like, when I first came up there, I was in the small studio, working, recording, and I cut, and I would see them, I see Vita, I would see uh, Hoodstar, shout out Beater, shout out Hoodstar. I would see Dollar, shout out Dollar. I would see all them in a big studio working on other stuff or whatever and then get ready to go to clubs. But I'd never be like, oh, can I come? Can I come, bro? Is there space for me or whatever? So I like, it got to a point with them where they was like, come on, nigga, like, why are you going home? Come with us. So I was like, all right, let me take this more serious. And then it got to the point where the show would let me come to the big studio. I was like, okay, I'll make a move now, all right. And then it got to the point where he would let me come and work by myself, just record stuff, because he knew I wasn't going to mess nothing up. I ain't changing no presets. I'm just pressing record, and then I'm going to press escape. I don't like it. Apple Z, all that kind of stuff. So he knew my work ethic, and he knew I wasn't going to fuck nothing up or whatever. So, I mean, it was really on a spoof. Like, I never knew his people worked up there, but they was the ones who was speaking highly on me to show. And when we linked up, I ended up making uh, Cali. And Cali ended up getting on Too Short Need 40 Project or whatever. That's really damn near like the last big beat or whatever I put out to the nation like that. Like I'm known for producing, but hold on, chops. Chops. <laughs> but uh, like that's like my.
my last real big beat that became a big record that I'm known for or whatever. I also made Birth Street. I made Get Active. I made Hyphy Wifey. I made Urkel Dance, Drop It To The Clap. You feel me? So it's like, you know, that's what it is. Let's talk about uh, movie clicks. Like, that got played in New York and out here in the Bay Area. Like, what was like the response towards back to you? Like, you were playing a major part in um, the response back was like really mind blowing. Like it really, I never like y'all know I'm not no actor or whatever. So it's like I never really like I tell everybody this. Like I didn't take it serious till my first day. I walked up to the filming day and it's big ass cranes and it's big trucks. And I'm like, what they making? Like it looked like they making a transformer machine or something or whatever. They like they shooting up the shots. They setting up the shots for your for your scene. I'm like. Oh, this is for real? So I had a lightweight, like, spin off and really get myself mentally ready for that. Like, this is for real. This is going to be, a lot of people going to see whatever I put out right now. You know, I have to take it seriously or whatever. So, like, that movie came about. Hungry called me. was like, you want to be in a movie? So I'm like, oh, I want to be in a movie. I went to Hyrule uh, uh, Studio, and I proofread some stuff or whatever. And I didn't know what I was doing. I was just reading it. They was like... You know, be you. And I'm like, I don't know. What's the character? You know, I'm not about to just be me in every movie or whatever. I got to act like somebody. That's what acting is or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So they was like, all right. They wanted me to play a good dude at first a little bit because I got the likability or whatever. But I am an asshole. So they was like, I'm going to feed off that. So at first, when I was doing it, like, they said I was too likable or whatever. So... I had to really turn up and, 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 and tune in. Like I'm hella grateful about that movie. I'm, I'm glad that, at, about the impact that it has. And I so didn't know the power that a film could really have over you being a part of it. I just always watched it. Oh, that's a good movie. Oh, Bill, that's a good movie. So like actually being in the tic tac parts and seeing how it was done, like it blew me away. How if you mix it right, you chop it up right, you put the right mu music behind it, like you could really have something that captures like. The real essence of the hood like because you know like a lot of people don't do that necessarily like this movie's not a cornball ass movie about oakland and this movie ain't no generic just hidden licks people getting their blame blown off having money throwing dope in the air like it, it has a it has a rhyme and a reason to it and if the show got a soul to it man like it kind of shows a little in depth to kind of like why people do what they do We're born in it like if you don't know nothing but this hood shit, that's all you're gonna do bro bro Good, good, good. Good. But like, you know, like my bird right there. Like if you're born in this sun, that's all you know. So like just like we can talk about like uh uh how can I say this without being out of pocket, like privileged kids. If all you know is the privileged life, that's all you know. You're gonna be like, oh yeah, my mom about to take me to San Diego, we about to spend like three weeks at a resort, you ain't coming, like nah I ain't got no money. What you mean you ain't got no money? Nigga, my mom paying for what the fuck you talking like if you don't know another lifestyle that you you feel me you ain't gonna never be able to really uh really soak it in and respect it or whatever so i feel like that's what this film does for sure for sure it got a heart there's a couple parts where you might find yourself crying there's a couple parts where you're gonna watch me you're gonna be laughing and you're gonna be mad at me but you know as long as now that i know what i'm doing i'm gonna try my best like even in my videos to really pull out some kind of emotion whether it be like happy joy whatever the fuck but for sure for sure that movie like if y'all ain't seen it, just watch the trailer, man. Go to go to uh, licksmovie.com, check out the trailer, man, and you tell me if it come off like a bootleg movie, a cornball movie. Like it's the realest movie, and it's the first gangster movie shot on Red Cam, and it won at the Chelsea Film Festival for best best picture, best leading actor, and best supporting cast, which is me. Man. So like, man, make sure you check it out, man. Uh, South by Southwest approved and made it last year. Only like. I would say like 50 films even get looked at to make it to the finals out of like 5,000. So, you know, that's a big look right there. So, you know, the film is good and we're working on the soundtrack. It's about to get distributed right now. I'm lagging. I need to sign some papers in my damn self. But yeah, that movie, like, very, very proud of that though, right? Uh, like, is it like end of the year, a couple years from now, like, do you see yourself doing more movies or just be more as an artist or like trying to keep doing both? Uh... When I was doing that movie, I, I never really felt like it was taken away from my music time, necessarily. I missed some shows to do that movie, though. Uh, I missed some studio time, but 
as long as you can make up for that with with hit songs and you know hard work like it ain't nothing that you can't bounce back from and it's not like this ain't just as much of a as an art form as music or whatever too so you know you still putting your visual especially out right now like nowadays you would want to do a movie something visual you feel me to get people to attract your eyes and separate you from everybody else because everybody putting out music everybody everybody either charging everybody you know doing their music hustle they only they separate ways so you know if you could do movies and this and whatever else you know I say do it I would for sure do a movie I wouldn't necessarily want to play the same role I try to be funny on some hood shit kind of like day day some shit like that I do that if they wanted me to play a bad guy I for sure need the cheese I ain't doing no bootleg being the bad guy again for the F though I ain't gonna lie though so you've been making moves to LA Fuck around with too short. Is there anything like you guys are having in the works right now that something exclusive out? You guys have to put out or something or just while you the video? Uh Show working on his last album. He gon his last album, it's gonna be his last album, but he's still gonna put on put out projects or whatever. They probably not gonna be albums, they're gonna be like compilations or whatever. So Show for Show working on his last album. He working also on the projects that aren't gonna be his album or whatever. And, uh, you know, Fab stay working out there. He's doing his thing. Shout out to Fab showing me love. Shout out to Fab and Show showing me love out in L.A. or whatever. You feel me? And, uh, you know, Fab, all he do is work, spit hot shit. You feel me? Cut a check just like Show. So, I learned a lot fucking with them. They got a lot of stuff in the works. I'm working on Black Hole Magic and I, I'm Black Hole Magic. Black Hole Theory. And I think uh, my EP, and I think we're going with Land of Ham for the EP name or whatever. So the Land of the Ham EP, and then it's the Black Hole Theory. I've just been working on my craft, really just trying to make sure I'm not recording the hella like. When I was young, bro, I was cool with sitting in the studio and getting on Chicken Scratch songs. But now it's like I don't even record the song if I don't feel a certain way about it. I ain't gonna lie. So like that's all I've been, and that's what Show taught me. Like if you don't feel good about doing it and it's your song, you're not gonna be able to sell it that good, and you ain't gonna feel it's not gonna. If you ain't feeling that, who else is necessarily or whatever? So, learned a lot from him. But, uh, him is the projects that people, everybody out there is in work. Shout out, Sue. Shout out, you feel me? Sage, everybody out there hustling. Shout out to the bay. You feel me? Move now. And then, before we end, is there anything you want to say to the fans that you can tell the people? Uh, man, I'm still working, man. I'm still fucking up. This music industry, man. I'm in LA, man. I'm putting out, I'm putting on for the town, man. Don't hate on. I'm gonna tell everybody like that, like don't hate on the LA movement necessarily, man, because them niggas know where the source is at, man. You feel me? Like me being out there now, like being around problem and all that, like they know who been kind of making music this wavelength. And LA got their own kind of style with it too. Like it's a lot more snares and. Like, that's not necessarily a Bay Turn Up song or whatever, you feel me? That's L.A. style. So don't be mad, because right now, it being like this, it's going to be able for the whole state to move together as one. And I don't think there's ever been a... I mean, I think old school, like, in W.A. days, with show being on tour with them and everybody like that. But this is going to be, like, the new next generation of that exact movement or whatever. Like, Cali as a whole, the West Coast as a whole, moving together. And if you can't get along over music, niggas ain't going to get along, so... You know, I'm pushing THAUpgrade.com, man. Shout out to the dudes. Shout out to my niggas in the 30s. Niggas in the 80s. And my niggas in the bottles. Hey, and them bad bitches at Laney, too. Feel me? Bobby Lopez, TLP Magazine, White Shot. Yep. DB, I see your ass, nigga. I'm covering shit. Nigga, niggas don't need money, nigga. <laughs> I see you, bro. <laughs>